Here we go, the year 1994. We're taking it back, another video game adaptation. You know the one, the one and only Street Fighter. All your local characters from Ryu, Chun Li, Chun Li, Chun Li, Chun Li. Why did I mess her name up? God dang. Guy Al. That's them. Guy Al. Bison. I'm gonna screw everybody's name up in this. Guy Major. Anyway, your favorite characters from Street Fighter in this movie, and guess who's heading it? John Claude Van Damme. Oh, yeah. not Shalan <laughs> Yes. Yeah, we're doing this. Street Fighter, 1994. Let's go. Take it back to the 90s. What's up, world? Welcome to another episode of Movie Breakdowns. I'm your host, Ali Zaka. I'm back here with Tyreek Cole. He joins me on another episode. He's having Mortal Kombat and a few other ones. Here he's back again. And what is Movie Breakdowns? It's a movie review series where we look at new and old movies, give them a grade A through F. Plus and minus if you count. If there's a movie you want me to review, let me know. Put it in the comment section and I'll try to get to it as best I can. Also, I have a Patreon. It's Ali Zaka Patreon. It's pretty much what it is. And on that Patreon, you can become a member, and when you become a member, you get movie reviews ahead of time. Also, you get extra features such as uh, trailer reviews, trailer reactions, my first thoughts on movies, all that stuff. So, a movie like I haven't seen before, like for example, Sonic the Hedgehog. You see my first thought on that one, you're like, oh, this is what he really thinks of it before I review it. And now today, we're going to jump right into Street Fighter 1994. I keep saying 1994 because there's other Street Fighter movies and there's different animations, but this is a live action 1994 movie. John Claude. Tell me, you want to go get first thoughts on it or you want me to go, go first on first thoughts? On the whole movie? Yeah, it's the first thoughts. She's like, what's your Ooh, first, first thoughts? I mean, look, man, jumping right in, Street Fighter, it's horrible. <laughs> It's horrible, man. I haven't seen this movie in a long time. I remember it as a kid growing up, and uh, you know we, we reviewed Mortal Kombat and everything. And I was like, I was trying to put it on the same level. Like, is it on the same level? Is it as bad? It's worse. <laughs> it's worse, Ali. What do you think? What are your first thoughts? So I remember watching the movie in, in high school. I think that's when I first told you about it. it was like, it's high school. It's like freshman or sophomore year. It's super early. I remember watching this movie on TV. And there's two things about this movie I remember. I haven't seen this movie since then, so by the way, that's about 15 years ago. Uh, a little less than that, about 12, 13. At least 10. Almost, yeah, definitely 10 years ago. I remember two things in this movie. The ending has this freaking freeze frame jump, like some kind of like cartoon. I was like, well, that's like it was a bad movie. And then John Clyde Van Damme jumping off the things and not attacking anybody. Like, yeah! And stands. Like, those are two things I remember. Two things I remember. And then I watched this again and I was like, oh, this movie is bad. <laughs> the ending goes. It is, but it's a fun movie. It's bad, but it's a fun movie. It's one of those movies I can watch and just throw in the background and laugh at it because it's so bad. I don't think they were trying to be, like, I think they were trying to be serious. I think they were trying to be serious. There's some few scenes where, like, you know, kind of like the Marvel movie where they had little quips and jokes where you're like, oh, okay, that could be a funny thing. But there's also scenes where like that's not supposed to be funny, but yet I am laughing at it. <laughs> Quick, change the it's channel. Like, it's like it's like that movie. Is Quick, change the channel. It's like it's like you know before before they really you know because comic book movies, these video game movies, still to this day they haven't come into form until like 2008, 2000. Yeah, that span when the MCU started popping, that was when they really started to come into form. So I swear, like anything you watch, any movies that are like comic books, video games before that, they're horrible because they don't know how to how to get a mix between the realism and then the fiction that comes with the uh, with the with it being a video game. Right. So they they try to find that middle road and it ends up being something like this, where you don't know if they're trying to be intentionally serious and it just ends up being funny. Or they were trying to be funny in a serious moment. It like doesn't make sense. Right? And on top of that, like Tyreek, I had to bring him onto this because when I was like, he knows video games, Street Fighter is his stuff. Like we go to Up Down, we play Street Fighters. I like I'm not a big Street Fighter fan. I love playing video games, but I wasn't really more into Street Fighter, more to Mortal Kombat. So I can tell Mortal Kombat how they're doing characters and stuff like that. Street Fighter, I didn't know that it was making making some characters messed up like Chun Li and messing up Gal and messing up Cammy. Like I didn't know this. Like I knew some back information. Like I knew Cammy was British, I knew Chun Li was Chinese, and I knew like, you know, E Honda, he's uh Japanese. Yeah, and, but he E Honda but what mess his name up? Balrog, 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 and Chun Li don't work together. I knew that was a thing. I like okay, 
and Sword ever since flat. watching Iron Man 3, which is much, much later, but ever since I watched Iron Man 3, I realized that they don't really, when you do adaptions of comic books and video games, they don't take full source material. So watching this one again was like, ah, it's okay, I'm not that bad about it. Him, on the other hand, was going off. There's, <laughs> there's liberties you can take. <laughs> there's plenty of liberties you can take, but it's just some stuff you you can't take defining traits away from people. Like if you want to, like it's just like if you make Spider-Man. How many versions of Spider-Man we got? We got a couple versions. Right now for live action three. Yeah, three. So you got a couple different kind of adaptations. You got the the new age Spider-Man where but the new one he's he's like got the shooting out his arm. Then yeah. you go back to the cartridges like old school, and then your Miles. And even if you look at if you take the uh, the Spider Verse movie, you see how how it's just different. You can't. Like, if they're, those are different people, you see what I'm saying? Different people, same same mantle, right? That's a superhero thing. When it comes to a specific person, and you're trying to per se, like, Liu Kang, this is Ryu, then you've got to make sure that I know that that's Ryu. And he's like, I'm watching this, and like, is that Ryu or Liu Kang? I can't tell the difference. You can't tell the difference. Right Ryu doesn't, the personality, the only reason you know they're the characters is because they say their name. The personalities don't match. The, they barely get the clothes right for half the characters for their, for their game outfits. If they're not in their game outfits, they're just in regular clothes. Yeah, and the movie, as the movie will intentionally say people's name over and over and over again. That way you don't get who that person they're talking to is. Because like, for example, they say Ryu's name literally so many different times. I think, I think somebody says Ryu, Gal says Ryu, no, Gal says Ryu. Uh, Sagat says Ryu at one point and says Ryu. M. Bison says Ryu one time. Like, they say their names right and then they say their names wrong. Or, uh, <laughs> John Claude messes up Sagat's name. He can't Sagat. speak English! <laughs> he said, what he, what he, it wasn't Sagat, he said, uh, Oh, Saget, Saget, Saget. Saget. <laughs> Anybody who knows Street Fighter, who's playing the games, they know when people mess up the name. It's, it's Sagat, not Saget. Okay, it's Guile, not Gil, or whatever people be saying. <laughs> it's Blanca, not Blanca. He's Brazilian. Dolph Seema's in this movie. Dolph Seema is not in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> he, he is in this movie. He is, and, he's an Indian scientist, so that makes him Dolph Seema. <laughs> and because he, he actually calls that at the beginning of the movie, when he first walked in, you don't hear it, but Bison calls him Dolph Seema. And Dalsim is wearing a chain around his neck and a chain around his hand, so the chain's connected. But he's moving around freely. He's acting like he's captured, but he he's moving but, around. But this freely. is what I'm saying like, right here. He like, flexes his arm. Nothing about this restricted his movement. It was just like he's wearing loose jewelry. How is that Dalsim? Everybody knows Dalsim. Is he a scientist? No. He's a martial artist. He does yoga. He's he's got stretchy limbs. We all know this. This guy was just a scientist in a lab with some. Un unshackleable chains. <laughs> what is this? That's what I mean by source material. Right. Like that is not. That is like completely not even the. Like making E Honda Samoan when he's not, or Balrog has been a good guy when he's a bad guy, and DJ who's a good guy. Has anybody he's ever a seen a Samoan sumo wrestler? I'm pretty sure it's one out there. I wouldn't be surprised. Sumo. I wouldn't be surprised. Traditional Japanese sport, sumo. I wouldn't be surprised. Hey, find me one. <laughs> find me one. And no, do not go to Moana. I don't want to see no Dwayne The Rock Johnson parodies. Ali, take it away. <laughs> what? <laughs> because Moana and Moana, he's a big old boy. I know, I know, I know. Have you seen Hobbs and Shaw? Yes. There's a scene on Hobbs and Shaw where they, they, they literally... Dwayne The Rock Johnson does a whole Samoan battle. Yeah, okay, does, I'm yeah. telling you, it, you go watch Hobbs and Shaw, then go watch Moana, and then go watch Street Fighter. And you tell me that they didn't get inspired from the future. Wait, wait, wait there's a few things in this movie that's about getting inspired. Mortal Kombat took. So there is the. I think. Uh, <laughs> I don't think so saying who said I can't forget who said that but somebody's like I don't oh, think so Raiden. <laughs> and then, no no in this movie he said that was uh, Bison Bison said it and then like Raiden just goes next movie nah uh uh I don't think so yeah, it is yeah, yeah. yeah. almost like and then the um damn the spikes comes up from the ground when Bison's revealing Blanca the spikes come up from the ground and we're like that is Mortal Kombat 
The ending of Mortal Kombat, right there. See, that's probably why. See, everybody played Mortal Kombat at the end of the stage. You knock them off the bridge. Mm -hmm. That's probably why they didn't do that. They probably saw this movie and was like, oh, it's so cool if we make the spikes come out the dragon thing. Just like, oh my god, that looks horrible. <laughs> they think of the jump kick. The oh, jump kick. Shit. <laughs> John Clive and them done. Force jump. <laughs> out of this. It's like, Vice is on the other side of the room. He jumps out and just. <laughs> bah! How did he hit him? He just swung across the room. Okay, sure. Oh, sure. All right. Any other first thoughts? Um, I, I didn't have a problem with character designs. I didn't have a problem with the music. Heck, I think there were some scenes in where like the music, background music, was okay. Then like, took me out the movie. Really, the one that did take me out the movie was the script. The script and the writing. Um, the writing and the guy that played Balrog, he earned that paycheck. He was no. Where is the hostages? Where are those hostages? It's horrible. Yeah, we got this. Back off! Like it was straight video game. Like just CPU, one liner after one, one liner. liner. Like it, it was got off. But one liner. Or let's see where E Honda is. They're, 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 Chung Lee has M Bison in her grasp. And she was throwing hands on man's, destroying him. And her friends come in, like they're like, "Oh, Chun Li!" She looks away, and Bison sneaks into his chamber, and within his room, he has like a little chamber. He closes up in, and he pushed like he has a the, panic room. Yeah, <laughs> it's not like a panic closet. It's like a panic closet. <laughs> and he pushed his button and caused gas to come and fill his room up. E Honda sitting there goes, "Silver, it's gas." It's gas. It's but everybody see the gas coming in. The the whole movie showed the gas coming in. So he ain't know it's gas. Why you gotta say what it is? Like we know what it extra, is. Extra, extra. It's gas. They're pointing everything out. <laughs> super, super obvious. <laughs> almost, almost as bad as Resident Evil, where he, where the helicopter flies off and he's just like, no, don't go. It's just like, it's like so bad, so cheesy, so emphasized. Like my biggest grab, like like I was saying, my biggest grab is that I can't tell who's supposed. To, they they messed up everybody. DJ ain't the characters aren't who they're supposed to be. It was like Transformers when 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 the Transformers and they completely change who they are. That's right. that's who I feel like with this movie. I get the trans, I get I get Transformer vibes. Ooh. Michael Bay, Ooh. explosions included. Um, so <laughs> storyline. This movie is about the Allied Nations, the AN. So all the nations around the world join together to stop Bison and, and y'all. Yeah, Shallow. Yeah, and Shallow. And Gal is the head guy of this. Like, he is the guy in charge. Not the top military guy. He's just the general and no, commander. Colonel. And, Colonel. Colonel Gal. In charge to stop this. And Bison has given him a challenge. In three days, he needs to find a way to meet Bison and fight him to save the hostages. And Bison has these hostages. If not, he wants, it's like, what? 2.5 billion, something like that, or some. But he won world domination. Is but he like, wants a whole bunch of money. I don't remember the exact. 25 million, 25 billion. Because, no, I think it wasn't billion, it was like million. Cause, yeah. Because, what's the name goes, <laughs> John Claude Van Dale in the single, what do you want? 50 billion next time, or 100 million yeah. next time. Yeah, I think it was 25 million. <laughs> for, yeah. for, for the um, for the hostages. So, that's the thing. They should have found out where Bison's at. However, Ryu and Ken are now trying to con Sagat. That's it, right? Yeah. Yes. Khan Sagat. And they end up getting entangled with getting captured by John Claude Van Damme, who for some reason broke up a night cage fight thing. Don't know why he was there, but he was there. So they anyway, they get brought to prison. They team up with Gal, uh, Gal and Chun Lee is there because she's trying to figure out how to stop Bison too, because Chun Lee's a reporter apparently. Yes. And her um she's been searching for Gal Bison her whole life. She found him. Thanks to Gal. Okay, not sure why, but yeah, that's what, how she made the connection, found him that way, um, and decides to fight Bison herself. So she gets captured so she can fight Bison and try to kill him. That's her goal. That's pretty much it. So everybody's trying to pretty much take out Bison mm -hmm. to save the world. That is the point of the movie. Oh yeah, and they captured they captured um, Gal's best friend Charlie Blanca. Who is not the two different characters, but it makes it one for this movie. I roll with it. That's what I'm saying. But they capture him. So bad. And they turn him into a monster that you don't see until the last 40 minutes of the movie, by the way. So mm -hmm. this movie is two hours and 30 minutes. Two, two hours to train you. Yeah, it took two hours to get to that point. 
So that's the point of the movie. They're, every time we're together, or they, everybody's working against each other, but Ryu and Ken are just there. They're not really, they don't care this about is, this. This is what really bugs me about the movie. They're, they're, Bison's this, this entity, right? He's the bad guy. Yeah. Now, in the games, everybody has some kind of connection to Bison or somebody in the Shadow Loop that has done some wrongdoing to them. You know what I'm saying? Bison obviously kills Chun Li's father. That's why she has the vendetta. Ryu and Ken, the connection comes from Sagat. You know what I'm saying? But they kind of do that, but it's in this weird way. There's no, there's not enough tension between these people. You don't see Chun Li go through her father's death. We don't know that happens. It's off screen. She, she talks about it though. She talks about it in which, very little detail. Which is actually one of the best lines I think a villain ever gave in a movie. Chun Li goes. She's like explaining what happened, and and Bison's like, okay, and Bison looks at her and goes, for you, he's like, I don't remember that day. She goes, what? You don't? Oh, he goes, for you, the day Bison graves your village is the most important day of your life, but for me, it was Tuesday. I was like, that is good. That is good. Because any, any he has a ton of monologues, <laughs> ton of monologues. But any villain, it yeah, makes sense because villains don't remember things. They wouldn't remember the little things. They wouldn't remember how they affect you. They just about them life. So therefore, they'll do things and just keep moving. Like if you ask Joker, Joker, you shot up my family and and they're right in this building here. He'd be like, oh, really? Yeah. How I many families I've done that to? Like it's messed up. But like same time, Joker wouldn't give two butts about you, but you would get butts about him. I just wish, I just wish that if, if you're gonna use the characters, you gotta use them in the right way. You can't make people have alliances with people they don't have alliances to. <laughs> people be people are friends that should be enemies. Enemies, some friends become enemies. Some enemies become friends. It's like that's what it feels like. It's like when has Balrog ever been a good guy? Right. I'm I'm pretty sure if you play any of the games or whatever, the, the, the Balrog, Vega. Uh, Sagat are lieutenants of Bison. They literally work for him. They're a part of Shadow Lou. You watch any of the animes, that's how it's depicted. And then uh, in this one, Balrog is a good guy. Right. Um, Vega is is Sagat's like right hand man for some reason. So like they they they, they almost had. They should just switch. They should switch DJ out with. Um, oh Bob my Mark God! And DJ is them. a good guy. Why and would they out do that? Zangief with. Uh, is it Zangief? Is Zangief. Zangief. He's Zangief. a good guy too. Why with, would they do uh, that? With Saga, you would've been okay. Or put Vega where was Zangief was at. Vega could have been where Zangief was at, but the problem is, is that is that they make they don't make them seem like they're bosses. They make them seem like they're lackeys, and they're, then they have lackeys of themselves. And it's like that's not how it works, man. <laughs> they're they're all competable fighters. They they make people stupid. Like they don't know what they're right. doing. DJ though cracked me up in this movie. DJ was like, every line that DJ was like, is it my money in the account? Hell no. <laughs> oh, and these are, oh, my, by the way, guys, these are supposed to be martial artists. These are supposed to be masters of their crap, okay? Apparently, Ryu and Ken are some street hustlers. Ken's rich. If you don't know, Ken Masters is rich. He he has money, big mo, big bank, but he's a street hustler. Ryu, a dedicated martial artist, go Ken, training the Hado, street hustler. I rest my case. Okay, so just think anything else I want to talk about? Cause the story, the reason why the storyline was seen all over the place like that because it was, it really was all over the place like that. The reason how I explained it was literally, it was just all over the place. You know, you had Bison the one thing. It was like, how do we get to Bison? That was everybody's like, Bison's yeah. consistent. He was consistent. He was probably the best thing He's about cool. this movie. Yeah. All right, let's, let's break down characters here. I got my phone out here because uh, there's a lot of people to break down this movie. John Claude Van Damme as Gal. He's not, he, John Claw is not American. He should not play this role. I am sorry. Like, his, his. It slips. It's, yes. <laughs> his native language kept, no, his native tongue, his accent kept coming through. Every time he was talking, I could not believe that he was American. I was like, God is not sound like that. I just don't believe For it. For those who don't know who Jean Claude Van Damme is, he's French, if y'all didn't know that. By his name, clearly. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> but yeah, man, like, it, it just. He did not sound like he was born and raised in America, and that the most patriotic character ever. The only person. No, okay, so in Street Fighter, the only two English characters are uh, American characters are uh, Guy and Balrog, and then so they have one good guy, one bad guy. Yeah. The good guy is the, he's the leader of the Air Force. How patriotic can it get? Tattoo. 
of the American flag. Wait, wait, it's in this movie. He go, <laughs> Tattoo the American flag. It, how you give a French guy a roll? <laughs> Just doesn't make sense. <laughs> Next kid. And then Raw Julia, who played M. Bison, he passed away a couple months after this movie was made. Or I think the action movie you know, was made or debuted at one or two. Um, but Raul Julia, he is probably my favorite movie villain. Like one of my favorite movies. I need to do a top ten movie villains. He's on that top ten list. Like he was phenomenal. I enjoyed him as Bison. He was goofy, but he was also terrifying. He <laughs> he had monologue the monologue. Like I like his, that scene where he's like, "You came here just to fight a madman, <laughs> but like, you think you found a god, <laughs> and you found a god." <laughs> <laughs> also, they do do their finishes, from, or not finishes, they do some of their special techniques from the move, from the video game, which I do give them props for trying. You know, just sometimes they, they, they mess it up, like Ryu does the um, hurricane kick. And the hurricane kick. But they, they, they cut it. They cut me takes of the, of the spins and can't really tell what he really did. Then you see Vega flip backwards, and you're like, okay. Who did, who did the hurricane kick better? Was it. Ryu in that scene, or was it Raiden when he kept doing those ballet spins on <laughs> They hit no one. But yeah, Raul well, Julia was great. What do you think? No, I like it, man. It, it, I think he's, he's probably the best character in the entire thing. And mm -hmm. see, here's the thing. He looks like Bison. Yes. He's got the fit. He's got the outfit. He's, he's crazy. He's got the villain monologue. I'll buy him as a Bison. He looks like Bison. Sounds like Bison. I do like the, I do like the fact that they had Bison always wears his beret hats. <laughs> no matter if he's in his casual Hugh Hefner robes or if he's in his battle pauldrons. <laughs> Ming Na Wen, she plays Chun Li, and she's in Agents of Shield. She's also in the um, Mandalorian. Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a complaint with her. Like her, her acting wasn't that bad. I was okay with her. Like it, it, it was, it was, yeah. Yeah, she's she's like oh, look, she's flat line. Flat line. Byron Man who played Ryu. <laughs> he looked like Luke Cannon and John Terry brought up, but I don't know, I thought he was okay too. Like he did his role right. Now he Dan says. <laughs> okay, well, he says. <laughs> well first, I hate Ryu in this movie. He's so garbage. He's a street hustler. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> You can't tell you, okay, you can't blame the actor for what the writers gave the character. I'm trying not to. I'm just like, bro, y'all, if y'all gonna, okay, if y'all gonna cast people, y'all gotta make them cast, look to say, like I said, Bryson looks fine, Chung Lee looks fine, you can get, we're gonna get the, they look, some people look fine, some people look off, some people look like they're not a part of this. Some people, Ryu and Ken, I'm sorry, go back to the design room. Costume wardrobe horrible. Sorry. Damien Chapa, who played Ken, I kept looking at him like he's not blonde. It's irking me. Like mm -hmm. make him blonde, and then I, I he doesn't know. act rich. Yeah, you know, he's just yeah. He, yeah, flat line. Flat line. He's, like, he's literally a buddy character to Ryu. He the, just cosigns. The rest of them, I guess. Zangi, see, there was Andrew. Andrew what's his name? I don't know how to pronounce that last name. Bye. I'm gonna try this, guys. Is Bynarski? Bynarski? Now he looks like Zangief. He did look like Zangief. I do give him that. Wrong role. <laughs> gave him wrong role. Gave him wrong position in the movie, but looks the part. But it made him dumb though. Like there's a there's a scene where there's a truck coming towards the um, tent where everybody's in, and they're looking at it on TV and they're looking at it back happening to him, and he goes, "Quick, change the channel." Change the channel. Yeah, like they <laughs> like DJ and Ken get the most dirtiest. Like, what the? F that's not just say dumb. That's just that's that's way worse. And then uh, DJ he's talking to DJ and DJ's like, I paid a fortune to work for him. That's why I'm working for him, working for uh, M Bison. And then Zangief look at him and goes, You got paid? You got paid? <laughs> just he cracked me up. So, well, basically, what you have is 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 you have a hint. This is the difference, guys. If you didn't know the difference between a henchman and a goon, henchmen don't get paid. Goons get paid. Yeah, Wes Studi, Studi. Uh, yeah. Who plays the gat? I, I didn't like. I didn't mind his character. Like, I didn't. Mind, I didn't mind. It wasn't the actors who made like who made me mad. It was the script they was given. How, for example, Grand L. Bush, who plays Balrog. <laughs> it's 
it's all you gotta make the characters act like who they are. That's all I'm asking for. Like make them act like who they are. When you watch this movie, he earned that paycheck. That man, he tried it hardest. Balrog was the criminal of this movie. Overacted everything. Wait, where's the hot? Where's the hostages? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, <laughs> yeah, kid. What other thing he did? Oh, uh, his his what's that punch he does in the video game? Where like he does a spinning punch? Oh, it's literally just a dash it punch. Charges up and he he's doesn't like, do that. He did it. He did it. He doesn't do that. I know he doesn't do that. Though. <laughs> he goes. He does. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like when you don't, when you, it's blatantly obvious when you don't pay attention to the source material. It's blatantly obvious. It's just like. Come on, bro. I, I don't like Sagat. I don't like Sagat's design. He looks like a business dude. He looks like a, a like a business dude in a suit. The only thing, the only thing that they got from Sagat to that guy was they had an eye patch. Ooh, which M. Bison is a, a nice eye patch on him today. He's but like, that's it. Yeah. But it doesn't look like the characters. Like Sagat's buff. He's a big, tall dude. Yeah. He's masculine. This guy just looks like your average, you know, business guy. And then we gotta talk about Dolph Sim because he's pretty much in most of the movie too. Like you yeah, can't ignore right. him. Who's played by uh, uh, Roshan Seth, Dolph Sim. Garbage. <laughs> he didn't fight. He didn't, yeah, he had no fight. He was sitting there working on Charlie Blanca, um, who doesn't really. I'm not gonna mention. I guess I mentioned the actor's name, Robert Mammon, but like he didn't do much. He was there at the look, end. Oh yeah, garbage. Oh, he, but, he's Blanca Charlie. Yeah, that's he's blonde like Charlie. Miguel uh, Nunez Jr., who plays DJ, he's there. He has a few funny lines, but he doesn't. He's a bad guy. Yeah, doesn't really do much. Peter Tua So Tua So Sopo Tua So Sopo. He's his last he's name is uh, Samoan, so I'm sorry I messed him up. But he plays E Honda and one like, fight team. Yeah. So I mentioned characters who were there, and this movie throw you a lot of characters. They throw a lot of characters at you, a lot. Here's what's weird though. Here's what bugs me. They try to go for some of these special moves that have like effects where they need to flash or do something crazy, like the Hadouken or even that bad hurricane kick. Yeah. When then there's moves like Ihanda e or Shang Li that have moves they could easily portray in real life, and they didn't, didn't even try. By the way, there's a guy in this movie who kept looking at it, like, who is he? Who is this dude? Why is he there? He's supposed to be T Hawk. T -Hawk. Oh my God! Uh, Greg Rainwater plays T Hawk. He was supposed to be T Hawk. He's just there. Wow. But doesn't really do much. Also, Cammy, who's played by Kylie um, Minogue, 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 Monagu, Monagu. Why is her last name like that? The Me only way we she know is that T Hawk is because he has a Native American headband on. He's literally a soldier with a band on, and he's just shooting people. As this on this, I'm just going. Cammy was all right. I mean, she's fine. I didn't have a problem with Cammy. She was lame. She was lame. But Jay Tabaré, who plays Vega, I'm just going to throw him in there too, because he didn't really have that much talking scene, but he was there. They like these characters. This movie throws you a lot of characters. They throw I, you so many characters. Vega's they, fine to me. Yeah, no, he's fine. He's fine. He's fine. I don't have a problem with him either. Max looks good. Outfit looks good. Claw looks good. They're just they're tossed into it. Like they like it's like oh Street Fighter movies. Let's hit up everybody we can and try to throw them in this movie. Hey, let's let's do this. That's what it seemed like they did. Yeah, that's probably that's probably what they did. Versus just saying like let's take a few characters and focus on them versus throwing you the whole. Cause I think if you they just probably get, try to get the whole cast of the other game, the Street Fighter <laughs> Two, they probably try to they just looked at the lineup and was like let's get them all in yeah, there somehow. Like if you were just done like Ryu Ken. Or Gal and Chun Li, and and just go with them. And if you want to throw E Honda in or, or throw somebody else, like you could have chose Bison, that's perfectly fine. And you could have chose Gal, you could have chose Chun Li, and had those three. That'd be okay. I think I think it would have worked. I think it would have worked if they would have just did it um, kind of like if they would have structured a little bit more like the game. Like if they would have made it to where if they would have made it to where Bison's big honcho, right? And then you have your you know your Scott. Uh, Vega and Balrog being your mini bosses, yeah. and then you focus on the storyline aspect, and this is what they do in most of the Street Fighter lore, is that they focus on kind of the Chun Li and Guile thing because they're the ones that have the real true beef with Bison, and then Ryu and Ken, you know, they have Ryu's beef is with Sagat, they have a thing, and then he's tied to Bison, so they kind of get wrapped up, and then of course Ken's gonna be with Ryu because they, they're trained together and they're part of the best friends, so he's going to come along like player two. You know what I mean? So they kind of have that connection. There's no reason for them to connect in this right. movie. It seems like, they're like uh, like you said, they, they just throw them in there for the sake of having them there. Yeah. 
But yeah, if they just would have focused and kind of structured it out, like separated them instead of trying to put everybody in a room together, everybody's fighting, and it, 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 like it almost feels like. Um, like a, a what do you call it? What do you call it? A, a dream matchup or something where you're actually playing the game and we both got controllers and we're just picking random characters to fight each other. Like a battle royale kind of thing. Yeah. Like, like it did something like that. Like you saying like, and I do, I do give them time. Some credit of throwing like Sagat in there at first and Ryu and Ken run into Sagat and they don't really know who he is and they just like they just like oh so they try to tie those characters in there like this is their beef that it somehow gets included with the main beef with. Re or with Gal and then Chun Li, so they get captured, and then Gal goes to Ryu and Ken, try to have them work for him. I, I, I get this, and then Ken and Ryu, but they're hustlers, which is like okay. So they they change their characters up like a lot, which Ken uh, Ryu wouldn't get into that kind of lifestyle. Like he's not, he's not what he's about. Ken's already rich, so why would they need to hustle? But okay, whatever. This is why they're in Shadowloo, which Shadowloo is a country in this movie. Um, so this is why they're in Shadowloo. So they <laughs> for those that don't know, Shadowloo is the is the criminal terrorist organization that Bison controls. Shadowloo is not a place; it is it is an organization. <laughs> but they got Shadowloo City, and uh, what, was, what was the other one? Bi 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 Bisonopolis. Bisonopolis. So Bison wanted to change the world and make it his own. He can take over the whole world and make Bisonopolis. Bisonopolis. A place. How do you say that? I can't even. Bi Bisonopolis. 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 Like Metropolis. On some Eggman stuff. It really reminds me of like like some some Robotnik Eggman stuff. There's another scene. I was thinking about that scene. Um, Gal puts me killed because he gets shot and dead. Shot and killed. And um. And DJ goes, congratulations, General, you won. He, he, like, he did. And uh, Bison goes, I actually mourn. And DJ goes, okay. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, thanks for just taking the wind right out of my sails. I was trying to back you up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just, I don't think this movie knew what it was. It's like, we should have did like top 10 worst lines or something. Oh, that's great. Top 10 Any lost lines? thoughts before we go into, um, see, watch a movie Friday night. Man, it they so okay. So they said the director was from from the the screenwriters and the directors from Die Hard, and it feels like they don't know nothing about Street Fighter, but all they know is explosions and action. There's some unnecessary explosions in here, but you know what? I like them. That's that '90s, that old that old '90s, old early late '80s, kind of around the '80s for real, for real. The '80s right. '80s action film where where they do the uh, the giant explosion in the background, and they just walk towards the screen. He does. Uh, John Claude does the does that uh, the jump through the explosion trope. Yep. And in the end uh, of every movie, when like so they explode and the good guy ex jumps away and like that. <laughs> yep. Oh, and then he goes. He goes. And Bison, your show has been canceled. The one liners, man. Oh, the one liners, gosh. great. <laughs> how, Gal, how you doing? I'm half dead. How's Bison? All, All dead. dead. <laughs> Oh. Oh. This is a good drinking game, guys. Take a shot for all the bad oh. <laughs> Okay. Oh. Should you watch this movie on a Friday night with friends and family? No. No. Hell no. Alright, grading time. Tyreek, we're going to grade Street Fighter 1994. You're numbers, Lewis. Huh? You do letters. Alright. You do letters and numbers. It's letters. It's A through L plus and minus do count. Man, I'm gonna have to go with I'm 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 gonna go I'm gonna go with an F plus. Is that a thing? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go F plus. Horrible. Okay. F plus. My my my, my quick quick gripes real quick. Mm -hmm. My my biggest gripe source material uh, almost non-existent. It's there, but almost non-existent. Um, the 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 script horrible script. And the biggest, biggest thing that I also want to say is that the pay, the pacing and direction of the movie. The movie is a hodgepodge. It's all over the place. Ali, what about you, man? I'm getting this movie. I'm getting Street Fighter 1994. Mm. A D minus. 
I'm getting a D minus. I go, uh, it, it dropped. It says watching the movie again with Tyreek, my grade has dropped, dropped. It was a D plus guy. I enjoyed it. And to me, it's a fun movie to watch. It's hilarious. I love it. But then you start breaking it down and look at the script and how the script just doesn't match together. How the writing is horrible. How the acting is over the top of certain characters and just the delivery of it is really bad. And then you're getting characters coming out of nowhere, it's mashed in versus focus on one character. You're getting all into one. It's like a hodgepodge, like he said. Uh, the acting, the the high flying jump kicks out of nowhere. The 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 uh, the like just the over the top fight scenes. There's a scene in here which I'm pretty sure is really racist. It's messed up. So the two Asian characters are finding this. They find a computer screen, and they like, oh, we found the monitor. They click on the monitor. And Zangief and E Hunter are fighting, and they're playing the Godzilla monster noise as they're fighting. And with the two Asian characters watching this, that's the most racist thing I've it's seen. It's a horrible scene. It doesn't that, make that, sense either. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, and it's racist to the point where like it's not like one of the movies where like their attention trying to be racist, like a slave movie, like Twelve Years a Slave or something like that. No, it's one of those like they thought it was funny. And it's not a funny joke. It does not stick. Yeah, it was a bad. It was a bad joke. Um, yeah, so that that like that kind of stuff and the acting, Cammy's acting, just everybody is uh, John Claude Van Damme trying not to let it slip, and let his accent come yeah, back out. He like tries he, so completely. hard, <laughs> and so and this is and this is still to this day. He tries so hard that English accent. But does like not when he work. plays another character and he's not supposed to be English, it's okay. Like oh, we're just a random character rolling. He doesn't have a good English accent. But, and this one, he's supposed to be English. He's supposed to be American, not English. Supposed to be American, yeah, American. American. God, um, but yeah, I, I, it, the movie ended up being funny to me, which I enjoyed it, but it's, it's definitely a D minus. It's, it's, the characters, this is the reason I gave it a D minus because I also enjoyed the character. Like, I can tell who the characters are. I'm not big of a Street Fighter fan, but I can tell who, who, at least pick them out. You know, they didn't, they rewrote everybody's script, everybody, everybody's backstory and everything. Besides, uh, Chun Li, I feel like the only one who really, they kind of stuck to beside her being a reporter. Is she the only one that never got in her outfit? No, she did. Well, that, that red outfit was in her outfit. <laughs> oh, Pigtails? Okay. Look, he's talking. Oh. I don't know. Why? Why did they make it red? Mm-hmm. I didn't even think about it. So, like, at the end, they, like, have everybody in the, what they're supposed to be in. That's the video game yeah. outfits, which the, the how they get into them is really weird. But I didn't know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that is our review of Street Fighter 1994. If you've seen this movie, what did you think of it? What did you please let us know? Please put in the comment section below. Like I'm curious what your thoughts are because I I enjoyed this movie, but it's a god awful movie. It's horrible. D minus. And then Mortal Kombat is a better movie than this. The first one, not, not, Annihilation, is worse, far worse than this. Uh, I really want to review because this is the thing of bad movies. I really want to view The Last Airbender so much. I just want to go. Which is the series of bad just, just go right into that. Right. But, um, yeah, we just got. What do you guys think? Please let us know. Thank you guys for watching the episode of Movie Breakdowns. Tyreek, thanks for coming on for another episode, man. Oh, wait. Corona. Yeah, yeah Corona. <laughs> so appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. See you guys next time and keep being awesome. Thank you guys for watching this episode. I really appreciate it. Please like, share, subscribe. And tell a friend about my series. Tell a friend about Grind Towards the Set. Tell a friend about the Movie Breakdown series. If you really like these episodes, I really appreciate it. It means so much to me. It means so much. I, I can't tell you how much it means. Like it's, it's like I'll be really grateful you just told a friend and share and subscribe to the series. And thank you guys for watching this. Also, if you want to follow my journey outside of YouTube or Facebook, you can go to my Instagram page and you can follow me on my Instagram page at Ali underscore Zaka. It's right here. Put it right here in my face. That way you're like, where's his face at? Well, it's right behind the Instagram logo. <laughs> yeah, but you can follow me on my Instagram page. And also, if you want another episode of Grind Towards Success or Movie Breakdowns, you can watch the episode of Grind Towards Success right here. You can watch the last episode of Movie Breakdowns right there. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. See you guys next time. Keep being awesome.